What is going on, everybody? It is so good to be back. A married man now after a little bit of a, a break here. We are back with my Week 17 NFL Power Rankings. Uh, it's been a couple of NFL weeks since my last rankings video, which means we're going to have more movement than normal. Going to be a really fun one. Please do hit that like button down below. Really helps me out, helps support my channel. Also, make sure you subscribe if you enjoy. We've got NFL draft season just around the corner. Playoff predictions, just a couple of weeks left. So lots of great NFL content coming back at you here now that we are back home and uh, back in business. So let's go get uh, go ahead and get started with the rankings here. Starting at the bottom, no movement there. The Jacksonville Jaguars remain a mess in what has been uh, really a wasted season. Believe it or not, Trevor Lawrence has only thrown one freaking touchdown pass since Halloween. They got a lot of work to do and uh, they got to figure out if Trevor Lawrence is actually good next year because right now we don't even know that. Uh, then we have number 31, a team dropping down three spots, and it's the worst offense in the NFL right now, the New York Giants. I mean, Jake Fromm is in there. Um, he clearly can't get the job done. He's had two weeks to practice. Their offense is a disaster. Jason Garrett is just laughing on his couch right now. He's like, see, it wasn't just me. This thing is a total mess. They're terrible. They're, they belong in the bottom feeding tier and towards the bottom of the bottom feeding tier. If you want any saving grace, they have two top 10 draft picks right now. And then the New York Jets at number 30. I'm not going to act like they've impressed me over the last couple of weeks. It's why they're staying put. Uh, if you want any saving grace, I feel like Zach Wilson is starting to get a little bit more comfortable in there. He still hasn't looked great, but a few weeks back from the injury now, uh, he's been able to make some more plays and he's not turning the ball over as much. So build off of that into next year, I suppose, with a couple of first round picks. And then the Detroit Lions at number 29, and Lions fans might be upset that they're not climbing more than this, and I don't want to discredit their win against the Cardinals. I mean, that was one of the biggest upsets of the season, and uh, not just like squeaking out close either, like they beat the living daylights out of the Cardinals. Now, the problem is, like, ranking this, that was by far their best performance on the season. They come out and really go back to looking like a bad football team against the Falcons last week. Um, but also with that Cardinals team, like they just, it was a great matchup for them. They punched them in the mouth and the Cardinals are a team that right now can't punch anybody back. So uh, while it was a huge upset, I, I just, I don't, I don't look at the Lions and like, that's who they're going to be every week. Case in point, they go back and can't do it against the Falcons again the next week. So that's why they're not rising here. But I don't know if we're going to be able to look back in recent history and remember a two or a three win team with as much of a feel good aura about them. I mean, Dan Campbell has these guys fighting. This is, is probably the least talented roster in the NFL, but they're well coached. They fight, they, they scratch, they claw. And next year, like two first round picks, an extra third from Kenny Galladay, you're going to get Frank Ragnell back, probably the best center in the NFL. Jeff Akuda in year three, a top five pick at corner. Uh, they're going to have a whole offseason to add skill talent here. Uh, this could be a really uh, fast rising team next year because I just believe in this staff. And it's not just with um, Dan Campbell. You've got to credit Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator, doing a great job with, again, a really non-talented defense that is playing well above their projected expectations. Uh, so a lot of time on Detroit there, even though they're not moving. And then the Houston Texans, a lot of the same narrative here. They're not getting quite the headlines that Detroit is getting because, you know, uh, Coley, their head coach, isn't quite Dan Campbell as far as, you know, making headlines with his press conferences. But really in the same way, David Coley has done an amazing job for the Houston Texans, shattering expectations here uh, people laughed at that hiring because nobody even knew who he was, but he's got that leader CEO type mentality. I've been really impressed with um, Tim Kelly, their offensive coordinator going back to last year, Lovey Smith, their defensive coordinator doing a great job. Look, the Texans are a physical team. They're constructed with all of these um, lowly drafted and, and cheap free agent pickups. They've established this culture where Look, if you don't want to be here, we'll let you go. J.J. Watt, most recently with Zach Cunningham. 
Deshaun Watson's not playing, but the guys that do want to be there, they're playing their ass off. And you also have a quarterback in Davis Mills that's looking like, uh, you know, someone to, to take a, a longer look at. Uh, that's really all we're going to say about Mills for now, but um, the Texans have, have been a very pleasant surprise. They have shattered their expectations. It's a team that most people didn't think would win any more than one or two games. Then the, the Carolina Panthers, and I think you could actually make a pretty strong case that this team should be below the Lions and the Texans right now. Um, it just comes down to roster talent for me. I mean, the Panthers' defense on any given Sunday can be a top 10 defense. And offensively, they've just been a disaster. I don't know if they're going to stay as bad as they have been. They've played some pretty good defenses lately. Um, but, man, it is just awful. And I, I think I'm ready to say, as I lower them into the garbage tier, our final team in the garbage tier, I'm done with Matt Rule, man. I'm, I'm ready for them to move on. I just don't think he's it. I really questioned their offseason as well. Like, the drafting of, of J.C. Orn is as good as he was I, I didn't even think it was the best corner available but they didn't go offensive lineman with Rashawn Slater their free agency was was really suspect and then you go into the season the firing of Joe Brady made no sense obviously it was not his problem they don't have an offensive line and their their freaking quarterback situation is a train wreck so uh, they fired Joe Brady and now what they're rolling out Cam Newton instead of Sam Darnold not that Darnold's like objectively better than Cam Newton, but you spent a second round pick on him. You might as well get an extended look at him to see what you may or may not have or what you can build into next year. What, you're just rolling Cam Newton out there to prey on the nostalgia of Panthers fans so that they overlook how bad your coaching staff has been? It's, it's just awful in Carolina. It just, I get that Rule has some redeeming qualities, but for me, there's just too many inexcusable things going on here i think matt rule matt rule should probably be be let go in carolina so there's your garbage tier some interesting stuff going on there actually a lot more interesting than this next tier because this next tier are teams that honestly i think their season's done but they're just better more competitive football teams on a week-to-week -week basis that starts with the washington football team now they are going to drop down six spots and if they play like they did last week they belong in the garbage tier uh, that's really not who they've been in the majority of the season. I actually thought all things considered in that rescheduled COVID game with Garrett Gilbert coming over from the Patriots practice squad with like two days to prepare, um, they, they had some fight in them. Now, obviously, the only fight they had in them against the Cowboys was against each other on the bench, <laughs> just literally punching each other as their season ended with the Cowboys exploding offensively. Uh, you know, this team is going to have a lot of tough questions to answer. Obviously, a quarterback. And also, like, I don't think Ron Rivera's got to go, but they got to figure out why this defense, obviously, you had some injuries there up front. But, um, you know, for the first half of the season, this was a terrible defense when they were healthy, too. So uh, they got some really tough questions to answer this offseason. Uh, definitely some hot seat conversation going to be surrounding Ron Rivera, I think, next year if they keep him. Then the Atlanta Falcons moving up a spot, I guess. Like, they beat the Lions and got shredded by the Niners. Like, the Falcons are still a terrible football team. They could still get the seven seed, and they'd be one of the worst playoff teams in recent memory. Like, I think they'd be even worse than last year's Washington team that snuck in in the NFC East. Um, this team has just got a ton of really easy wins against bad opponents, and I don't see this team being competitive against anybody in the playoffs. So they're in the mix, but I don't see them as a real team. Then we have the Seattle Seahawks dropping down a spot, losing to the Bears. They collapse at the end. You know, their offense has looked a little bit better lately, but Russ just still has not been um, a top five, top 10 quarterback. It's weird, man. He has fallen off. I don't know if it's that he can't extend plays like he used to or what, but if you're not getting elite Russell Wilson, this is just an incredibly below average football team capable of losing to our next team, the Chicago Bears. And the Bears climbing up three spots again, whatever. Like Nick Foles started this week. I will say like their defense has probably exceeded expectations given all the injuries they've had and the players they've had to let go. Uh, Robert Quinn is like the sack leader in the NFL right now. And that's been without Khalil Mack out there. So um, their defense is good. And, 
you know, they, they move the ball. Uh, David Montgomery's quietly been one of the more efficient running backs in the league. They've got some stuff they can do, but uh, this is not a fun or exciting football team. Same with the New Orleans Saints. Now, I did enjoy what was one of the most masterful defensive performances against Tom Brady and the Bucks. Certainly this year, and, and let's just say in the last five plus years, uh, just a perfect game plan. The players executing the physical mindset uh, to come out and just punch that Bucks offense up front, dominate the line of scrimmage, dominate in the secondary. It's good to know they're capable of defensive performances like that, but just as, as we saw against Miami, like you can only sustain that for so long when you literally can't pick up a first down. So you're impressed by them beating the Bucks. They're still technically in the mix, and they're actually climbing up two spots because they're going to get some of these guys back healthy. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like Trevor Simeon back in the lineup soon, get those tackles back in there, which which will help the offense be a little bit more functional. But yeah, you know, Saints are pretty much dead in the water. At this point, they just had too much go wrong for them this season. All right, then we have a tier gap up to teams that are kind of in the playoff mix, but teams that I just don't consider teams that can win a Super Bowl. They just have too many inconsistencies about them. And that starts with the Denver Broncos. Pretty self-explanatory there. This has been one of the most inconsistent week-to-week -week football teams. Uh, and, and that's really all you can say. Like, you don't really know what you're getting from the Broncos on a week-to-week -week basis. Some weeks it's good defense and, ex and, and bad offense. Some, some weeks their offense actually looks pretty explosive and the defense lays an egg. Lately, the defense has been pretty consistent. Um, but yeah, it's just an inconsistent football team. Let's move on. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles at number 20. A another team that's, you know, they kind of beat up on bad teams. And I just don't see them being a team that can go head to head with any real playoff contenders. Jalen Hurts was incredibly concerning against the New York Giants. Figured a few things out late because he got endless opportunities against Jake Fromm. But, um, you know, beating a uh, a, a battered and broken Washington team with a practice squad quarterback and beating the New York Giants is far from an impressive couple of weeks for the Eagles. It's looking like they're probably going to get that seven seed. I'm pretty sure their remaining schedule is pretty easy, uh, which is, you know, an impressive season for Nick Sirianni. Nobody expected this to be a playoff team. Um, but uh, with Jalen Hurts and his inconsistencies, I just, I can't take this team all that seriously. And then the Las Vegas Raiders. This team showed some pretty good fight. Uh, they're actually kind of like a defensive-minded football team right now, um, but they can do stuff offensively. Derek Carr's not bad. Got Hunter Renfro. I think they're going to be getting Waller back. Uh, and Josh Jacobs a monster, man. So, like, they can do enough offensively. Their defense is, is solid, like really, really solid. If you haven't checked out my film breakdown of Max Crosby yet, please do. He is a legitimate defensive player of the year candidate, and he has really um, taken this defense to the next level. So uh, they're going to climb up three, a couple of big wins in a row. They're fighting in this mix for that seven seed, and I don't think they could play spoiler. That's why they're in this tier, um, but a little better than like the Eagles and the Broncos. Then we got the Browns, really good defense. You know, Miles Garrett should be the defensive player of the year, and uh, it's it's just the offense, man. They they can't put any sort of consistency together. They have little flashes in there. You get a quarter here, a half here, uh, where you look at Baker and you're like, he can he can do enough uh, with a defense that plays really well. And, and a, this run game truly is dominant. Uh, they were out like three starters on the offensive line against Green Bay. Uh, and they still like 200 rushing yards. Um, but ultimately, when you have a quarterback that just He's like a turnover waiting to happen right now. He cost the Browns that game against the Packers. It's going to cause them to fall. So minus four for the Cleveland Browns. Then the Baltimore Ravens, weird couple of weeks. You get Tyler Huntley, comes in, looks pretty good. Um, but their only good corner, Anthony Averett, gets injured against the Bengals where they get slaughtered on a record-breaking day for Joe Burrow. Uh, they're getting Lamar Jackson back, which is obviously a big boost, or at least I would think they're getting him back very soon. Um, they're going to be in the mix here in the AFC, but obviously a team reeling, who's honestly their season has just been lost by injuries. I, I feel so bad for Ravens fans. I really do, because uh, there are injuries at this point. It's it's just unsustainable to, to win with, with, with that many injuries. Uh, then the Pittsburgh Steelers at 16, they're staying put. They've kind of steelered around the last couple of weeks. 
Uh, they scratch and claw and beat the Tennessee Titans with, with a defensive performance in week 15. And then they go out and can't move the ball and get slaughtered against the Kansas City Chiefs. This is who the Steelers are. They need elite defensive performance to win a football game. They're capable of it, um, but it's just not sustainable. Then we got the Miami Dolphins, plus three. They're, they're right in this territory, right? Browns, Raiders, Steelers, like none of these teams have consistent offenses and the Dolphins are very much in that category. In fact, their offense is probably worse than those other teams, but at least they know what they want to do. It's just RPOs. Uh, Tua is pretty accurate, like outside the numbers. He can make a few throws. He's probably going to give you a couple turnovers as well. Um, but I, I just, I feel like the Dolphins as a team have so much momentum. Um, and, and I just, I, I'm such a believer in Brian Flores and that defense is just rocking right now. So they're, I think a little bit better uh, than those teams we just did, but the gap here is, is getting really, really tiny. Then the Minnesota Vikings at 14, they beat the Bears. And, and they actually kind of went pound for pound with the, the LA Rams. Um, just a couple breaks here and there, and, and they're right in that game. I think this is a good spot for the Vikings. They're they're in the mix for the seven seed. They can move the ball on offense. This defense is actually playing okay right now, um, but probably still, like, Mike Zimmer's kind of got to go, and Kirk Cousins, what are you getting on a week-to-week -week basis? Obviously problems here, but this team belongs in this tier. And then the San Francisco 49ers, I am going to lower them down to the top of this tier. You know, I just, I can't see them winning a Super Bowl, barring like Trey Lance coming in with this Jimmy um, Garoppolo injury and Trey Lance like blowing up um, and just being the superstar all of a sudden. I don't expect that to happen. Uh, the, the defense just has problems. Their secondary obviously just can't hang against good receivers and good quarterbacks like we saw against Tennessee. And uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is capable of, of really good games. He's actually been pretty underrated this season on a whole, but he's got two glaring issues as a quarterback that I've highlighted. He sprays throws and he fails to see linebackers over the middle of the field and he will, he will turn the ball over. Um, so he's got some issues. It's just tough to count on him to give you enough consistent weeks that you would need to win a Super Bowl. Um, so the Niners are, are a good team. I've been really impressed with their play calling. These playmakers are elite, like seriously elite, um, but they just have too many problems right now. So they're going to be at the uh, top of this non-Super Bowl contending playoff caliber team tier, I guess, if that makes sense. Uh, then we have a tier gap up into our second tier, and these are playoff caliber teams, true playoff teams that uh, I just, I, I don't think are as good as like your Super Bowl caliber elite guys. But these are teams that I think if the right breaks happen, they could win a Super Bowl. And that starts with the New England Patriots who are kind of reeling right now. Mac Jones went from best rookie quarterback to in the cluster of rookie quarterbacks where the last couple weeks he has not played all that great. Now, I liked his fight in the second half of that Colts game, but in general, uh, he just, he's not really a guy that's going to carry this offense. And uh, defensively, they're obviously very good, but, you know, this is a team that just has their limitations. They kind of have to come out, run the ball really well, and uh, play great defense, which as we know, in 2021, it's, it's not the most easy way to win on a week-to-week -week basis. Then we have the LA Chargers, who are like the complete opposite of the Patriots. They lean on explosive plays from Herbert, and, and Herbert really like getting in the zone, really. Uh, and they lean on, on you know, big plays on defense, forcing turnovers and stuff, because this is a team that cannot stop the run, just as we saw against the Houston Texans. Um, and, and they're not a great running team, though they... They have moments. Um, I don't know. They're just a weird, inconsistent offense and straight up a defense that has no physicality about them. So they are very matchup dependent. I've said that before, and I think we saw that hold up. Like they're a team that is built to kind of hang with a team like Kansas City, who's not a physically minded um, run the ball, play defense style. Uh, the Chargers are fit to go uh, match up with a team like that. But even a team like the Houston Texans, who are like, we are going to just pound it down your throat, um, they can't 
they can't really hang with that. It felt like Rex Burkett was get, getting whatever he wanted against the Chargers. So that's a problem in the AFC playoffs. If, if they run into the Titans with Derrick Henry or even the Patriots or the Colts, like that's that's bad. That's bad for the Chargers. But if they get lucky and they can meet like the Bengals, maybe the Chiefs and I don't know, the Bills, like if that's their path, they could go to the Super Bowl. They're just very matchup dependent. Then we have the Tennessee Titans. I've been really impressed with them, especially that win against the Niners. You know, as I've said, it's been injuries for them. And getting A.J. Brown back is the first reminder of what this offense can do with those superstar playmakers. And A.J. Brown is their offense, literally was their offense against the Niners. Um, the ability to just get open over the middle of the field, the ability to be that reliable third down target for Ryan Tannehill and give them an identity and offense that they have lacked so much, it's huge for this team. And their defense is actually balling out right now. Tannehill, I thought, played a really good game against the 49ers. So they might be getting Derrick Henry back here pretty soon. This team's heating up at the right time and they're climbing pretty quickly in the AFC and they actually hold the two seed right now uh, if they had to lose Derrick Henry, it wasn't a bad time to do it because their schedule's been a joke since he went down. So they've kind of survived. And then falling off a cliff with a K, the Arizona Cardinals, now for the second season in a row, get to the back end of the year and completely lose their mojo and fail to adapt. And that's a big concern. You know, the well-coached teams get better as the season goes on. The Cardinals do the opposite. They come out with some fun new tricks and then they don't adapt as other teams adapt to them. Kyler Murray, same thing. Season goes on, he gets a little beat up and doesn't play with that same confidence. Uh, not that Kyler's the problem here, but um, you know, this team just, they're not like a great team right now. They have all this talent. You hope when the playoffs come around, they get DeAndre Hopkins back there. Um, but what are the Cardinals right now? Because they don't have an identity on offense. They're not a physical team on defense. They're not really rushing the passer very well. Is this really a Super Bowl caliber team? I don't know. I mean, they got blown up by the Detroit Lions a week ago, and they lost to the Colts, who were out four of their five offensive linemen. That's just really ugly right now for the Cardinals. Then the Cincinnati Bengals climbing up one. They took care of business against Denver. It, it wasn't pretty. Um, but they got the job done and then slaughtered um, the Baltimore Ravens IR squad um, or, or practice squad, I suppose. But uh, Joe Burrow, man, he is, he's been easily a top five quarterback on the body of work for this season. I got a lot of crap when I said I'd rather Burrow than Dak Prescott and other guys. Um, he's incredible. Fast processor, extends plays. He's getting more and more confidence week by week. Uh, they've adjusted and, and really gotten like T Higgins to be a focal point of this offense. And whereas at the start of the season, it was just funnel the ball to Jamar Chase. They've become more multiple. It's helped them run the ball better. And defensively, they're just very solid on that side of the ball. So the Bengals are, as far as this cluster is concerned, they're actually one of the more well-balanced teams. Um, they do have some weaknesses. You know, that offensive line is going to be a problem for them if they run into some really good pass rushing teams. But the benefit for them is you look in the AFC, there's really not a lot of good pass rushing teams. You got the Chiefs, the, the Titans. No, the Chargers got Bosa. They gave Burrow some problems. But, you know, the, the Patriots, like, the Bengals are kind of fit to go on a run in the AFC, and they're the team that I'm really excited to see um, come playoff time in a couple weeks here. Um, but then the Indianapolis Colts, I, I'm really trying not to get sucked in to this team like too hard. I try to stay as unbiased as I can, but I am like falling in love with this team thanks to the Hard Knock series. I mean, it's been by far the best like Hard Knocks experience to see and, and it's not just like the hype or whatever. It's to see the way that these guys prepare and how well coached they are. Frank Reich is the real deal, not just as a CEO culture building type, but as a play caller. He sets things up so well. They lean into Jonathan Taylor, but they can create chunk plays without a lot of like really explosive players. They get it from Naheem Hines. Um, 
Doolin, T.Y. Hilton, like they will find opportunities to catch you off guard and they'll hit you at the right time. Like he's a phenomenal play caller. We saw it in Philadelphia when they went on that Super Bowl run. He is a premium head coach. And you have one of the top head coach candidates running your defense in Matt Eberflus. Like this team is so well put together. Carson Wentz is an interesting quarterback for this team because, you know, play to play, he's not super consistent. He will um, try to turn the ball over. I know his interception total is low, but he is up there in turnover where he plays. He's gotten away with a lot of stuff. Um, but he's also a guy that like, kind of like we saw at the end of this Cardinals game, um, if, if you need him to get you a get you a bucket, make a play for you, he, he is a quarterback that can do that. And he is comfortable like playing out of structure. He's, he's a unique quarterback for them to have. And it's nice to kind of have that in their back uh, pocket and just lean on Jonathan Taylor, who is a legitimate MVP candidate right now. So I really like the Colts. This might even be lower than Colts fans want to be. Um, I still think they have their limitations offensively. Um, but there's not a lot else to say about the Colts. I mean, this team is getting hot and confident at the right time. And uh, look out. No one wants to play the Colts right now uh, out of these wildcard teams, for sure. Then the Buffalo Bills, really good couple of weeks. They slaughter the Panthers, whatever. Everyone's doing that right now. Um, but to come out and play the way they did against the Patriots is really encouraging. And it's, it really comes down to Josh Allen because that to me was Josh Allen's best game of the year. And for him to do that against Bill Belichick and this Patriots defense that has given him fits, it, it was a big deal because that's a huge confidence booster. His chemistry with Stefan Diggs is coming back and uh, his confidence in those playmaking situations, it, I, I think that's so critical for this team that doesn't run the ball well and they don't have an overly like I don't know. I just don't trust this defense to be an elite defense. I, I don't know if that's unfair. It's probably just a lack of elite playmakers, but they are very like solid and um, well put together, I guess. But if, if this team wants to go on a playoff run, Josh Allen's going to have to play like that. And to see him play like that on the road in Foxborough with the division on the line two weeks before the playoffs start, you can't ask for a whole lot more than that from your 100 $240 million quarterback, whatever it is. Uh, then the LA Rams, they're gonna stay put at five. This defense is humming right now. Aaron Donald is, is you know, quickly like trying to take defensive player of the year back from Miles Garrett. It looked like a lock like two weeks ago, but Aaron Donald all of a sudden's like, yep, I'm still the best player in football. Don't forget about me. Uh, Jalen Ramsey has been unreal uh, as well. Like this defense with Raheem Morris, they're really doing a good job. Uh, and then offensively, I'm, I got my concerns. I mean, Matthew Stafford, I, I, I hate to overuse inconsistent, but that game against the Vikings was so ugly. He tried to lose that game for the Rams, like every other drive, interceptions, just stupid mistakes, missed throws, costing like um, not just interceptions, but like there's big chunk plays to be had and Stafford's like short arming stuff the last month of the season. Um, you know, he really took himself out of the MVP conversation. And I'm just really worried that come playoff time, you're going to get a stinker for Matthew Stafford because the rest of this team is ready to go. Uh, but at this point, it's, I don't think you can just expect Mac Matthew Stafford to give you four straight weeks in, in January. Um, but then we have a tier gap up into my Super Bowl elites, if you will. This is my top tier. And I did go back and forth with this because the Bucks obviously... Um, got shut out by the Saints, team that matches up with them really well. They're one of the probably only teams in the NFL that can actually pressure Tom Brady, get hands in his face within a couple of seconds, and have the cornerbacks to actually press and play man coverage against this team. Really nobody else does that as well as the Saints. So it's a unique matchup. They give Tom Brady fits. And then they come back out the next week and they slaughter the Panthers. They get Antonio Brown back. The offense does enough. They run the ball. You know, ultimately, this is, a, this is a roster that is built well enough to sustain injuries. They are adding up. And that's why I went back and forth with them on if they should be in the elite tier. But 
You got a healthy offensive line. You got Tom Brady. You still got Antonio Brown. Mike Evans should be back pretty soon. That's more than enough to have a high-end offense. Let's just leave it at that. And then defensively, like this is a dominant unit. They just are. I know Shaq Barrett is a little beat up right now. They have depth at that spot. They can withstand that. Um, this to me is still a terrifying team that nobody wants to play in the playoffs and is right in the mix with our next three teams, though I do think they are a cut below. Then we have the Dallas Cowboys moving up three and more notably into the Super Bowl tier. And, you know, they beat the Giants. They beat Washington. It's not like they had an impressive couple of weeks as far as who they beat, but it's how they won and how good I feel about this defense at this point, because this is potentially the best pass rush in the NFL with Parsons and Lawrence and company. They've got linebackers. They've got uh, secondary players really across the board. I feel very good with Dan Quinn running the show that you're getting one of these better defenses in the league. And then even if Dak Prescott has had his inconsistencies, they're going to get theirs. He's he's too much of a methodical, consistent passer that with Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, an offensive line that works, running game, multiple tight ends, like they're going to get theirs offensively. Uh, they've had some inconsistencies. They'll give up some yardage on defense. They can be a little hit or miss offensively at times, but uh, for the most part, this is a super well-rounded team and absolutely should be in the top Super Bowl contender tier, in my opinion. Then the Green Bay Packers are going to drop down a spot, and it's been more just that I've been more impressed with the Kansas City Chiefs. I will say Green Bay's defense the last couple of weeks scares me. We've all got PTSD of Packers defenses getting just really terrible uh, come January, like no way around it. In the last couple of weeks, it's been soft defense, poor tackling, busted coverages, really going back to what they're used to. And it's a little bit scary. Again, this is more about me being more impressed by the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, Packers still hoping to get guys like Jair Alexander, David Bakhtiari, maybe Zadarius Smith back. I'm not really concerned about the Packers, um, but I just think the Chiefs right now have retaken the crown. I mean, Mahomes is dialed in. That touchdown he had, buying time in the red zone, navigating within the pocket, that is when Mahomes is at his best, when he can trust his offensive line, use that pocket presence, and escape when he needs to, but don't always necessarily bail out. That's when he is so lethal. And then the defense for the Chiefs has gone from bottom five to, I don't know, top 10 Uh, where they're getting after the quarterback with Chris Jones in the middle. Their linebackers are playing better. Bolton and Willie Gay have really solidified themselves as a solid duo. And this secondary remains incredibly underrated. So uh, the Chiefs are the best team in the the NFL right now. And uh, with the AFC not having as as many good teams as the NFC, or at least high-level teams, uh, I think their chances of getting to the Super Bowl are, are better than anybody at the moment. So there are the Week 17 NFL Power Rankings. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below. Make sure you comment where you agree, where you disagree, and subscribe. We're going to have the Fully Inflated Football Podcast coming your way tomorrow. Uh, going to be a special show. I'm going to get into my quarterback rankings, which are always fun. We're going to do some coaching hot seat conversation and then we'll get into the mailbag so it's going to be a really fun show make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss that tomorrow and uh, until then guys thank you for watching we'll see you later peace out